So I keep getting asked, Ryan, why don't you make videos of your woodworking? Well, the normal answer is it takes a long time. But since I've been getting asked, I thought I'd make a video real quick. A uh, simple project. I'm going to take a piece of square wood and make it round. And uh, make it so you can use it for something. What you want to use it for, I don't know. But we'll find out. Let's go. All right, so the first thing I like to do is take my square piece of wood and find the center. Uh, this way I can, I guess, make a little circle on it. And once you got that, uh, it makes it way easier to have a little reference mark to be able to take over to the bandsaw and knock the sides down on it. Uh, if you have wood turned before, uh, you know, it makes it a little easier you don't have sides on it. And yes, it looks like I'm having troubles here. In reality, I'm running out of lead on that guy. I need to get some more. So at the bandsaw, you don't need to cut right to your line. Just kind of cut near it. We're just trying to get it into a kind of a round shape. And don't worry, Mom. My hands are safe. Yeah, I know I got a little close. But yeah. Get the sides knocked down on it, and when the sides are knocked down on it, it's just gonna make it way easier in the lathe. It's gonna be way easier for your tools and you in general. Now, I like to make uh, waste blocks. So this one's already been pre-turned. It's got a tenon on it already. And I've actually used this same piece on several others. So when you make them, you can use them more than once. Although this one's getting kind of thin, so this is the last one it's gonna be used on. And uh, my method of applying glue uh, is kind of one I just started doing on my own. I put glue around the outside of the block, and on the inside, I'll use a little CA glue, a little cyanoacrylate. Uh, that acts kind of like a nail. Helps hold it on there a little better and gets you on the lathe a little quicker. After all, this piece will be cut off anyways. Yeah, I just use a little pressure. I do the same thing to this and the piece I'll be using for the lid. Um, I tend to like to focus on my glue bottle, apparently. I'm gonna have to fix that. But yeah, I clamp it down. Uh, I usually just throw it into a clamp for about 15, 20 minutes before I put it on the lathe. Uh, when it's on the lathe, the headstock will be holding it in 90% of the time anyways, and I've never had one fly off. So, I did the same thing to the top as I did to the body. So, get that on the lathe and start turning it. Get a little around. Actually, this piece here was a scrap piece. You can see it's got marks in it from the lathe before. And, uh, yeah. Use your wood. Use all of it. And getting your lathe, your your rest and your tool setup is kind of important. Get them set to the right height, makes it a little easier to turn stuff. And once you're ready, start turning. So first I'm gonna do the lid. And the reason why I'm doing the lid first on this one is I want to make the lid or the body fit to the lid. And honestly, this is the first time I've ever taken this approach. Uh, it was an idea I had in my head and I thought it'd be easy to do a video like this. So, here we are. And when doing the inside, uh, part of it, it's, it's once I take this piece off the lathe, I'm not gonna be able to get to that point, that part, and do it again. So I chose to sand it and get that ready first. And then we kind of just need to make our body round. Get the rest of those sides knocked down and get it, get it nice and smooth. Sometimes you'll see me do it here in a second. Yeah, use the tool to see if it's if it's smooth. If it bounces off, it's not. 
and I like to use Forstner bits to get rid of a good chunk of material right in the middle. Uh, and what I'll do is I will measure the wood. So this guy here was, I, I wanted to get the bottom right around two and a quarter inches from it. Uh, and then once I had to remove more material when I'm trying to smooth out the bottom, I decided to remove two inches. So I'll set my block uh, to one inch, back it off a little bit, start up the lathe, and then I will use the Forstner bit and I'll only insert that two inches in. Uh, and that does pretty good for not, you know, going through the bottom of your piece, which is kind of important not to do. Yeah, yeah I don't like going through the bottom. I've learned from mistakes. Now I measure. But also with your Forstner bits, go slow. Uh, depending on the wood, it might take longer. Uh, this stuff was still a little wet and it's fairly soft, so it got through pretty quick. Also that guy right there, yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that little tool. That thing's pretty cool. So once I get the hole to the correct depth, now I need to fit the lid. Need to make sure it's gonna sit in there right. And I'll be honest, I, uh, I screwed up. Made it about a 16th too wide. So, yeah. You can't add wood back on. But, the good thing is, it won't ever get stuck. So I tried to, I made a line on it and I tried to go to it. And the reason why you don't see the angle where you can see the line is my head uh, kept getting in the way. Yeah, I got a big head. And uh, it was causing problems. So you just keep going, take a little bit off, grab your lid and see where it sits. And it can be a little tedious, just keep checking back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Hey, there's my head. So there, now we got it sitting in there. You can kind of see the little bit of a groove I put on it there. And, uh, yeah, so that's where the lid's home will be. Now, I kind of had the shape in mind for this when I first started. And... I don't usually normally have a plan set out. But this one I kind of... I kind of thought about it ahead of time. I kind of decided on the shape I wanted. And I knew I wanted to have this lid kind of recessed into it. So what I do next is I uh, find that middle. Uh, in the middle of the bowl or pot or whatever this thing is, uh, it's going to be the high point. So I want to mark my high point, the point at which it's going to be the widest. I'll just make a pencil line there and I'll make sure I cut away from that going each direction. Then I like to put a little bit of sanding sealer on the outside. I find it makes it easier to do final sanding and actually get a, a good smooth finish, uh, especially when using carbide tools. I'll put that on the outside before I go in the inside. So that way when I'm done carving out the inside, the outside's dry and I can do the final sanding on it. And I don't have the correct tool uh, for doing the inside. Uh, but it's not 
too bad this works it gets the job done so once I get that all done uh, I made a finial and all the top parts of the top but I figured this video was getting a little long anyways so I kind of skipped to the end um, I decided to finish it off after doing my sanding with a uh, Danish oil. And this Danish oil is food grade safe, so you can you can put food inside of it. You can put sugar, whatever you want. Uh, I really don't care what you put in it. But yeah, I'll do this about four or five times. I'll let it sit on there for about an hour, let it dry, and keep applying it until I have the finish I I like. And then sometimes I'll put a little bit of extra wax on the outside of it just to give it some more protection and uh, then it's then it's ready to go ready to go to its final home so there we go all done it's not perfect uh, probably made this what hour and a half uh, start to finish and that included gluing it up and letting it glue uh, dry and set for a little bit but yeah, it's kind of neat. It'd be something, I don't know if you want to put some sugar or some dry creamer in there. That'll work. The uh, finish, as I said, is food safe. Uh, it's a Danish oil that is 100% natural and allows you to actually put food in there. Uh, it's not toxic. But yeah, this is Whiskey Tab Woodworks. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Till next time.